Hello everyone, back in today's first video, doing the ECM Draft 30 day look at for today's first video for the UK and for the rest of Europe as well. So uh, we're going to be looking at temperature and precipitation anomalies for uh, Europe for the next uh, four weeks. And uh, yeah, we're going to extend out with this into the latter stages of July, I think. Um, or certainly into the second half of July anyway. Uh, and this does extend to weeks five and six, but we're going to stop this at week four, and then you will see the week five and six temperature and rainfall anomalies in tomorrow's live stream uh, from six o'clock in the evening. So that will be tomorrow with the live stream that you'll be able to see weeks five and six temperature and precipitation anomalies. So I'll get on with that for you uh, very shortly. Just to say that coming up later on today, uh, we're going to have the regular 10 to 14 day view update and that will include all of the usual features. Um, we're at the Copernicus uh, website uh, for this. A big thank you to them for supplying us with charts. Again, these can't show you mean several pressure or 500 millibar heights, but you can get a rough idea what Molly's is forecasting from its temperature and rainfall uh, anomalies in terms of the broad overall pattern. So uh, this is the week one temperature anomaly. This takes us from the 22nd to the 28th of June uh, for uh, for Europe. And you can see that uh, the warmest anomalies to average in week one, from 22nd to the 28th of June, are going to be across northern parts of Europe, where we see temperatures widely going up to between around 6 to 10 degrees above average. It's just a little spot of 10 degrees above average air through um, central parts of uh, Scandinavia. So widely, uh, yes, we're uh, 6 to uh, 8 degrees above average uh, across northern Europe. Out in the west, again, heat wave conditions uh, across many parts of the low countries, France, the UK, even to Ireland above average, or not quite as much above average for Ireland, only around a degree above average there, or 1 to 2 degrees above average. But for the UK, uh, we've got temperature anomalies going up to around 4 degrees uh, above average. So generally, it is a very warm scene, a hot scene, across many northern parts of uh, Europe and in the northeast too. Down to the south, it is uh, cooler in the southeast corner. So through the Balkans, from Italy, down into the southeast part of the Mediterranean, cooler than average temperature anomalies there with uh, anomalies widely going to around a couple of degrees uh, below average. Across Spain and Portugal, we see temperatures again a couple of degrees above average through there. So overall, it's a pretty warm to hot scene in the north and west of Europe. The southeast corner has quite a coolish scene. <coughs> Excuse me. And then through the Mediterranean, we've got it uh, warmer than average over on the western side of the Med, cooler than average over on the eastern side of the Med. Uh, week 1 precipitation anomaly going from the 22nd to the 28th of June uh, looks like that. So once again, it's driving average across the north of Europe. So anywhere sort of uh, north of Germany, going up to Scandinavia, then back to, the, back to uh, particularly England and Wales anyway, it's a driving average through there. The far northwest of uh, Scotland and through Ireland, a little bit wetter than average through there. And then this eastern side of Europe, from around Poland towards the Black Sea, uh, significantly wetter. Wetter than average uh, through there, very substantially wetter than average, probably down to clusters of thunderstorms coming down into the Mediterranean. It's largely uh, around average, really, uh, through many parts of the Med uh, precipitation wise, which tells us that, um, particularly in this southeast corner, could be a little bit on the unsettled side through there. So essentially, high pressure dominating over Scandinavia this week. And there's a ridge somewhere around here as well, probably a trough of low pressure through here. And then we've got low pressure uh, with the jet stream up through there as well. Uh, right, we go on to the week two temperature anomaly, which takes us from the 29th of June to the 5th of July. And we see that, again, for northern parts of Europe, it is coming out hotter than average through there. Uh, again, Scandinavia, back to the Baltic uh, Sea and northeastern parts of Europe having temperature anomalies up to around 4 to 5 degrees uh, above average. Across the western side of Europe, it's also significantly uh, warmer than average too. 
uh, with temperatures again somewhere between around uh, 1 to 3 degrees above average central parts of Spain in particular looking uh, very hot through there. Out in the northwest, uh, a little bit on the cooler side for northwestern parts of Scotland down into Northern Ireland. And we still have this cooler than average area across eastern parts of Europe, particularly from like uh, eastern Poland towards um, the Ukraine. Although the Black Sea is actually getting hotter as it, as it is up towards uh, southwestern parts of Russia too. Through the Mediterranean, it's quite a hot scene across uh, Many central and western parts of the Med, so from Italy, back to Spain, Portugal, quite a hot scene there, down into the southeast of Europe. Uh, it's quite warm as well there, also, uh, certainly warmer than it is in week one. So, generally, quite a warm scene across many parts of the continent, hot scene uh, from the 29th of June to the 5th of July. Uh, precipitation anomalies uh, for week 2, 29th of June to 5th of July, look like this. Quite a wet week uh, across much of northern Europe, so it's a more unsettled and wetter week. Uh, now, we do still have, like, England and Wales driving average and, and much of France, too, down to Spain and Portugal. Wetter across northern and western parts of Scotland. Ireland looking quite dry, but as we go further eastwards to Scandinavia, significant wetter than average through there, particularly across southern and western parts of Norway, I mean, extending down through the central parts of Europe and over to the east too. <coughs> Excuse me, you could envisage some big showers and thunderstorms going on through this week. So I would imagine this week sees the hot spell sort of breaking across many northern, eastern and central parts of Europe. The hot spell breaks and thunderstorms become heavy and widespread through this week. But probably still with some influence from the Azores High down here where it is dry of an average low pressure and the jet stream is up there. And then this is probably some sort of thundery trough of low pressure uh, that we've got around here. Through the Mediterranean, again, we see many western parts of the Med looking uh, pretty dry. Down towards the southeast corner of the Med is a little bit dry of an average uh, through there as well. Uh, and as we go through to uh, the week three uh, temperature anomaly, this is going to take us from the 6th through to the 12th of July. Again, quite a warm scene, uh, really, through uh, many northern and western parts of Europe. So, again, Scandinavia looks significantly warm on average, as does much of western Europe. Temperature normally is somewhere from around half a degree to two to three degrees uh, above average. It remains a pretty warm to hot scene across much of northern and western Europe. Cooler on the eastern side of Europe again. So, it's a fairly consistent theme. It's the eastern parts of Europe down to southeast of Europe. Cooler, always warmer, hotter in the north and in the west too. Coolest anomalies to average again, kind of like from uh, Poland over towards uh, the Black Sea, down into the Mediterranean, uh, east-west split, so western parts of the Med from uh, the Holiday Islands back to Spain and Portugal, more than average there. Eastern parts of the Med, cooler uh, than average through there. So yes, the northwest and much of western Med, uh, warmer, hot and average, cooler over on the eastern side of uh, Europe. Uh, precipitation anomalies look like that for week three from the 6th through to the 12th of July. Uh, wetter than average over on the eastern side of Europe. So where it's coolest, it looks like it's also uh, wettest anywhere from Germany towards Ukraine and the Black Sea. Wet there with big thunderstorms looking uh, probable. Further north and west, it does vary from area to area, but generally it's drier to the north and the west, telling us that we probably still have some anticyclonic influences here into the early part of July, the first half of July, probably still generating some sort of uh, some sort of high pressure influences through there. And then finally, we come through to week four, which is the 13th to the 19th of July. And no real changes, to be honest. It still remains hottest across northern Europe through Scandinavia. Again, temperatures widely sort of uh, two to four degrees above average through there. Pretty warm in the west. Uh, Ireland, France, Spain, Portugal. Uh, temperatures around a degree or perhaps a little bit more than a degree above average. Coolest anomalies are over on the eastern side of Europe. Again, in this area just here, Balkans going northwards up towards Poland and over towards Ukraine. Those sort of areas come out cooler than average in week four. Precipitation uh, and uh, for the Med, so uh, again, it's coolest in the east, warmest in the west. Finally, precipitation for week four, rainfall anomalies look like that from 13th to 19th of July. 
wettest over on the eastern side of Europe and in the northeast too. So all of these areas just here to here looking uh, wetter than average. In the northwest, it remains uh, drier than average really. So again, it does look as though we've probably got high pressure ridging in from the Azores through here and going northwards up towards Scandinavia as well. That would be my interpretation that a thundery trough of low pressure is elongating down through here with those cooler temperatures and also big uh, thunderstorms looking probable. Jet stream probably doing something uh, a little bit like that. Uh, so for Mediterranean, also the southeastern corner of the Med looks rather unsettled. The western part of the Med looks a little bit on the drier side. Uh, so yeah, that's how it's looking uh, for the next four weeks. So overall, not too bad really for the north and the west, if you like warm and dry weather. There will be interruptions of unsettled weather, but generally the ECM seems to be painting quite a settled, warm, at times relatively hot, and also pretty dry scene, I think, for many northern and western parts of Europe and the island of the UK, including that. The coolest and most unsettled weather always looks like it's over on the eastern side of Europe. Up to uh, week four, anyway, up to the middle of July. And then, of course, we're going to extend out beyond that uh, in the live stream tomorrow, uh, Wednesday evening from 6. We'll extend out beyond that, looking at the week uh, five and six temperature and rainfall anomalies. And that probably gets us towards the end of July, maybe even to the very start of August. I'm not sure I haven't looked at the dates yet, but certainly weeks five and six uh, temperature and rainfall anomalies will be included in uh, tomorrow's live stream from six o'clock in the evening. Okay, that's that's it for your first video for today. We'll be back later on with a week 10 day video update, so come back for that then. Uh, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.